The Dragon Spear, Knight of the Round Table, Festering Fingerprint. These are all titles of the Tarnished who came closest to becoming Elden Lord before we made our way to the Lands Between. Vike. Vike is a fascinating character, used as the poster boy for Elden Ring with his image across the box art of the game. One of the most interesting things about him is that his lore leaves little to the imagination. We have enough documentation on Vike throughout the game to paint a clear picture of who he was and his journey without too much theory crafting. While other lore channels have given us thorough dissections of Vike, our viewers made it clear that they wanted our take on this character. In an attempt to bring something new to the table, we're going to be looking at Vike a bit differently than we normally would. We're going to try to tell his story chronologically, from the first pieces of lore we can learn about him, all the way to our confrontation with him in the Lord Contender's Everjail. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to help our channel with YouTube's algorithm. Now, let's explore the story of Vike, beloved by the dragons, tarnished knight, and carrier of the frenzied flame. Vike was originally known as the Dragon Spear. This name likely came from his signature weapon and his close ties to the dragons themselves. In times long before our tarnished came to the lands between, dragons worked alongside Godwin the Golden and his knights. One of these dragons, Lanciax, was the sister of Fortisax, and it's said that she took the form of a human to commune with his knights as a priestess of the ancient dragon cult. Vike's Dragon Bolt is an incantation that allows us to utilize red lightning to boost our stats, and the description tells us, of all the knights, Vike the Dragon Spear was the one Lanciax loved the most. With this in mind, it's likely that Vike was originally a knight of the Dragon Cult that served Godwin the Golden, as he was able to build a close relationship with Lanciax while she was in her priestess form. After the Shattering, the Tarnished were exiled from the Lands Between, and Vike was almost definitely amongst those who awaited the call to return to their home. Once the call was heard across the Lands and Tarnished started to return, Vike joined in the rallying cry and was renamed Vike, Knight of the Round Table. From here it's said that he came the closest out of any Tarnished to claiming the title of Elden Lord. It may be confusing that any Tarnished could claim to be close to gaining the title, as when we reach the Lands Between, we need at least two great runes to ascend to Lanedale, and when we fight our way through the Lands, it seems none of the Lords have been defeated, but Vike would not be held back by this limitation. As a former Knight of Godwin and the Dragon Cult, it makes sense that he would know the only other route to entering the Altus Plateau without the Grand Lift. After reaching this Golden Land, he likely would have been seen as worthy of reaching the Earth Tree. However, something happened that would change the trajectory of Vike's fate forever. The Fingerprint Set tells us no other Tarnished was closer to the throne of the Elden Lord than Vike, but without announcement, Vike traveled far below the capital and was scorched by the Flame of Frenzy. Did he make his choice for his maiden? Or did some other force lure him with suggestion? We encounter our very own temptation when it comes to the Flame of Frenzy in the form of Shabriri, using the body of our comrade, Yura. We know Shabriri's goal is to bring forth the Lord of Frenzied Flame and cleanse the land in fire, but he doesn't lead with this. He tells us the Frenzied Flame below Langdell is a way to save our maiden and forgo the need of burning her in the forge to set the Earth Tree ablaze. It's likely Shabriri, in one form or another, offered the same guidance to Vike, who, as a noble knight, may have seen the sacrifice of his maiden as an abhorrent act, even if it would secure his place as Elden Lord. Another possibility could be that Vike learned of the Frenzied Flame and the necessary sacrifice of his maiden from the Frenzied Flame village. A ghost outside of this area tells us, Ah, Lord Vike. It seems that you were no lord after all. Then where is he, our true lord, our lord of frenzied flame? We beg of you, incinerate all that divides and distinguishes. We believe this implies Vike was not the one to turn this town to frenzy. They likely were already worshipping the flame. 
so in an attempt to spare a life he believed should not be cut short, in order for his own rise to power to proceed, Vike took the only other route available to him, and met with the Three Fingers. Unfortunately, this would lead to his downfall, and his new title, Vike, the Festering Fingerprint. Vike's spear tells us it is singed and blistered by fingers like Vike himself, it has been tormented by the yellow flame of frenzy from within. All of his armor shows the prints of the three fingers burned into them. It looks to be melted into his flesh, and his cape is tattered and worn. After accepting the frenzied flame, Vike became a shadow of his former self. It's unknown why, but he was not able to contain the flame in the same way our tarnished can if we choose to walk that path. Perhaps this was because he didn't have a guide to warn him that he must first strip off his armor. It may be his armor prevented him from fully taking in the flame. Regardless, Vike fell to madness. We do not know what happened to Vike's maiden. It's possible that the dead maiden we can find at the Church of Inhibition once dedicated herself to Vike, but we can't know for sure. It's entirely possible that the madness that took him over forced him to murder the very woman he took the flame to protect. It's also possible that much like Melina does if we take up the flame, she chose to leave Vike after he cast aside the will of the two fingers. Perhaps, if she is the maiden we find at the church, she simply chose to end her own life as her purpose of supporting Vike was taken from her and she saw no reason to continue living. Vike the Festering Fingerprint became an invader, moving through time and space, destroying Tarnish with the frenzied flame, driven by an insatiable urge to burn everything to the ground and start anew. But that's not how his story ends. Even if our Tarnish finds this invader and defeats him, we're still able to face Vike the Round Table Knight in the Mountaintop of Giants. It's possible the artwork on the box of Elden Ring is the moment Vike fell to his knees, weary from battle, that allowed him to be captured and locked within the Lord Contender's Everjail. This would have had to be done by those loyal to the Golden Order, as no one else would have access to the lift within Landell that would take him to the mountaintop. So it's safe to assume the final order was given by Morgoth to lock Vike away so he could not be a threat to the Erdtree. The most interesting thing about this fight is that Vike is no longer controlled by the Three Fingers when we face him. He's not the festering fingerprint. He's Vike, Knight of the Round Table Hold. And he has access to the lightning magic entrusted to him so long ago by the dragon who loved him above all other knights. So perhaps his imprisonment wasn't a punishment, but a show of respect from Morgoth to the knight who served his brother so well before the Shattering. Perhaps the Everjail's dimensional properties severed Vike's ties to the Three Fingers, much in the same way Mikola's Needle can do for us. No matter the reason, this is the last time we see Vike, the man who almost became Elden Lord, and we face him as a tarnished knight, not as a puppet of the Frenzied Flame. Vike's fall from grace is a cautionary tale to all in the lands between. Sometimes the same qualities that make a knight a paragon of virtue and chivalry can lead to their own demise. For Vike, the life of his maiden was likely worth plunging himself into the flame and ruining his chances of becoming Elden Lord, and it's up to us to decide if we're willing to make the same trade. We hope you enjoyed this exploration of the life of Vike the Dragonspear, Knight of the Round Table Hold, Festering Fingerprint. Please leave a comment letting us know your thoughts on this legendary Tarnished. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next video taking a look at Shabriri, another man closely tied to the Frenzied Flame. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.